Hello, I'm Atuba Judge. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you today. Lord, you are so good. <laughs> you are a good God. And we thank you for all the utterance that you've been bringing to us, teaching us truth, bringing us to understanding your heart. Lord, we thank you. For the miracles that are taking place in the lives of those that are watching and, and listening to this message, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the testimonies. We give you praise. And Holy Spirit, today you will guide us into every truth. And we will learn to walk with you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Now, yesterday, I know where I stopped yesterday. <laughs> praise God. You know, I was talking to you. We, we, we are reading from Romans chapter 10 and verse 10. And here it says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, you see, I was telling you something yesterday about positive confession. You know, so some people say, I don't want to say the wrong thing with my mouth. Now, listen, you may think you're saying the right thing, but you end up saying the wrong thing. So you see, the best option is actually to keep quiet if you don't know what to say. Now, here is what confession is. You know, I told you yesterday, you know, say, oh, no, you, you quote the scripture to say, the Bible say, let the weak say I am strong. So that's why I cannot say, you know, so somebody is sick. He said, what's wrong with you? I'm very strong. I'm very strong. Oh, oh, I'm very strong. He said, ah, why didn't you come to work? Ah, brother, I'm very strong. Oh, I'm very strong today. And he said, like, okay, so why didn't you come to work? Are you not getting me? I'm very strong. Oh, 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 you're not feeling well. <laughs> yeah, I'm strong, I'm strong. <laughs> and like, oh. Oh, so, so why don't you just tell me straight that you're not feeling, ah, no, I cannot, I cannot talk like that, you know. I cannot let those kind of words come out of my So now you feel if you say, I am sick, it means you have accepted the sickness and then um, whatever. But now you're feeling that way already. I want you to follow me carefully because these are borderlines that people make mistakes and then they don't get results. Now, the attitude looks right, but the works itself doesn't carry foundation. So you may not get results like that. I'm telling you the truth. So you find people who are confessing, I'm strong, I'm strong, and then they die. And then you wonder what happened. Hey, but that guy was always telling us that he was strong. Now. Why? But he was confessing the word. Which word were you confessing? See, that's, that's the thing. Which word was he confessing? Uh, he was quoting the words from the Bible. Now, it doesn't mean it's your word. Oh, you know, that's what I was explaining to you last week. Listen, listen. You know, it's, it's important I say this again. Because I've seen people who, who in their minds, they trust in the Lord. You know, when we, when, we, when we see Jesus and the books are opened for us to see, you'll be shocked by a lot of things. Lots of things you thought, ah, this one, oh, nah, nah, this shouldn't have happened to this person. This shouldn't have happened. You'll be shocked. See, God is righteous. He, you see, that's why, you know, Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Do you know what that means? Seek God's way of doing things. Spend your time. That should be your life work. How does God do this? That should be your life work. And that's why he says, look, when you do that, all these other things, they shall be added to you. So the time you used to be looking for money, use it to seek God's mind concerning money. The time you used to be running health, you used to seek God's mind concerning that thing that you're chasing. 
The moment you get the mind of God concerning it, what happened? You see that thing that you wanted to chase? will start chasing you. It's as simple as that. So why don't you employ your energy to knowing, knowing the mind of God? And that's what I'm explaining to you. Now, get this. I've said this several times, and some people don't agree with me, but you see, it doesn't matter whether you agree or not. I've always said this. When, 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 when I say something that is new to you, don't just go, hmm, this is offending everything that I know. Haha. Uh -huh. See, before you are made whole, you're supposed to be torn apart first. You know what I mean by that? So, you know, sometimes you go to the, 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 the physician and then they need to do some stitches on you. And before doing that, they have to clear that whole place. They're like, why don't you just stitch it? No. <laughs> we have to clear, you know, clear, scrape every hair, scrape everything around there and just so that the stitch will be fine. So they spoil something, you know, get what I mean? They, they make you uncomfortable first so that then they can get you well. Praise God. So it's the same thing with the Lord. When, when he wants to get your attention, he will throw something at you that will unsettle you. Now when that he unsettles you and then the dust begins to settle, and they're like, oh, everything begins to fall into place. Praise God. So, I've said this severally, that the Bible is not the word of God. It's not. Now, when you say this, people think, what are you trying to say? So, what it is then? Then listen. Listen. Because if you don't understand this, you won't understand faith. And that's why lots of believers are stranded. What is the Bible then? Listen, listen to me. The Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the word of God. What they did with it and how they ended with it. Did you get that? Or oh, I should repeat it again for those of you that want to write. I said the Bible is a compendium. You know what a compendium is? Several books, you know. The Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the word of God. What they did with it and how they ended with it. Now, so what does that mean? Why, 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 why is that different from saying the Bible is the word of God? This is the difference. When you realize that from Genesis to Revelation, He's saying one thing. And what's the one thing he's saying? God speaks to his children. See? So you read in Genesis how the word of the Lord came to Adam and Eve. How the word of the Lord came to Moses. And Abraham, sorry, in Genesis. Isaac and Jacob. You, you find that their, their relationship was guided by the voice of God coming to them. And then you go to Exodus, you see Moses. And, and you, all the books of the Bible, you see men who walked with God. And you, Job, the same thing. You see they hear the voice of God and they responded to the voice of God. What do you get from all those stories? It's not to read them and say, hmm, man, so Abraham just carried his son to go and kill his son. I mean, I don't think I can do that. Too. Yes, you cannot do that because you didn't hear what he heard. You cannot do that because you didn't believe what he has believed or what he believed. But I'll tell you what. If you are put in the same place with Abraham, you will do the same thing. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So you read that and you're looking at, hmm, hmm. Ah, hmm. Was this right or was this not right? The essence of that story was the fact that a man had God speak to him. And he contemplated what God said. And he chose to believe it. And look at how he ended. So the question then is, that same God, does he still speak today? And then, that's where your belief starts working. Now let's, let's look at this. Now, now you, I hope you understand that now. Why I said the Bible is, 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 is not the word of God. But it's a compendium of testimonies of people who receive the word of God. What they did with it. The reason is, when you take this, you say, oh, I, I, you know, I take the Bible. The Bible is the Word of God. So anything that is written in the Word of, in the, in the word of God, you know, or in the Bible, is the Word of God. And, and many people have gotten into trouble. I remember telling you one time, you know, this, this whole story, when the prosperity message became, you know, prominent. You know, I think that was from the, 
from, from the year 2000 and upward. You know, lots, I mean, the prosperity means now one of the scriptures that was loud then is that scripture that says, Money answereth all things. And I say, Because preachers were trying to get money in the hands of getting believers to accept that money is good, getting believers. So they began to preach and they quote that scripture that money answereth all things. And you hear people say things like, the Bible says money answered all things. And then when they say the Bible says, it looks like they are saying, God says money answered all things. But it takes maturity with God to realize that there is no way God can say such a thing. See, another scripture, it says money is a defense. Yes, it is written in the Bible that money is a defense. But is that what God said? I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So someone takes that. The Bible says money is a defense. And in his heart, God says money is a defense. So men have got to have money. So I will be defended. You know, you, you, hear, you began to hear believers talk like that. Say, boy, you've got to make money. Now that was when lots of preachers began to put delve into businesses and, and, and all sort of you know, things to make money. And the truth is, many of them have made wreck of their faiths. Believe me. You see, as, as, as a believer, especially as a preacher, you've got to be mindful of everything that you do. You see, because you are supposed to be an example of Jesus Christ to everybody that meets you. So your testimony matters. So if you have money, the testimony of that money is what matters to you. Not the fact that you have money, not the cars, not the houses, but the testimony of that money. You see, first of all, you, I, I don't know why I'm saying this now, but I, I believe I'm reaching out to somebody. If whatever you have as a preacher, if you cannot believe and truly communicate the truth concerning it to another believer, and let him replicate and he will get the same results. Something is wrong with that thing. What do I mean? If it didn't come by faith. Let me show you something before we round off here. Now we're reading Romans 10, verse 10. Okay, good. Look at verse 12. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. Did you see that? So there's no privileged ones where faith is concerned. There is no privileged ones. It is a simple principle. If you walk it, whoever you are, whether you are rich or you're poor, whether you're a slave or you're free, whether you're Jew or Greek, if you call on the name of the Lord, He's got no preference. I'm telling you the truth. What he responds to is his word. So if you get his word from him and then you act on it, he, you will get the same results. So if as a preacher you have a result that you, you cannot tell people how this result came about and and when when i mean tell people how you know sometimes you find preachers who say man i suffered before i got to where i got to i suffered now when you hear preachers talk like that they are trying to make it look like this journey is hard no you suffered because of your ignorance and that's the truth because see if you're if you're if you're truthful to yourself you realize that all these years of suffering that you, you spoke about, they are truly because you didn't know something. So what happens? The Lord brings you to the place of knowledge. Say, hey! Ah! Whoa! -ho -ho. So I've been in ignorance. And then you gain knowledge, and then you, begin, you walk in the light, and then things begin to work out for you. It doesn't mean someone else have to go through all those suffering to get to where you are. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Because sometimes you make it look like this, this walk is, is tough. You know, sometimes I'm walking the anointing. Do you, do you know what I went through to get this anointing? The anointing was free. It was free. Whatever you went through, depend, number one, depended on 
or, 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 or I say depended on where you were in the first place. Where were you? It doesn't mean we are starting from the same place. You may have started from the place of complete unbelief. Someone else may be starting from the place of little, just little belief in his heart. You will get the same result. Say, I fasted 40 days and 40 nights. I did not taste water before I got this anointing. Listen, after the 40 days and 40 nights, what happened to you? God spoke to you. And it was when God spoke to you, believed him, the anointing began to work. Someone else without fasting can go to God and say, Lord, what are you saying? And God will speak to him. The fact, the essence in the whole story is that you got the word of God. I've got to stop here because of time. And then we're going to continue tomorrow. I hope you're getting this thing that I'm saying to you. God bless you. Bye-bye.